This video will demonstrate some of the inventory functionality that exists in the CloudSkew system. We will begin by logging into the system. You will notice across the top of the window are numerous tabs that represent the various dashboards available in the system. The tabs are Inventory, Purchasing, Sales, Reports, and Administration. For the purposes of this video, we are going to focus on the Inventory Dashboard. The others will be discussed later in separate videos. As we look at the Inventory Dashboard, we see commands that are available to us are categorized at the top. For the Inventory Dashboard, commands are categorized as Inventory Management and General Item Maintenance. Below the commands is an area of the screen labeled Quick Lookup. Quick Lookups allow us to efficiently execute filters on our inventory data, taking into account both the site and the filter type. For example, to see information about all the active items stocked in Store 2, we will select Store 2 from the site list. The list of items is updated and reflects the quantity on hand, order, and target quantities for the specific site. As we switch between sites, you will also notice the quantities update. Likewise, if I want to see any low stock items in our warehouse, I simply choose Warehouse as the site and Low Stock Items as the filter. The list updates automatically to reflect the changes. The Inventory Dashboard allows us to use Quick Lookups to quickly filter both items and transfer orders. Transfer orders are orders created to transfer inventory from one site to another within your organization. Below the Quick Lookup list are a series of buttons that will let you interact with the results. We could choose one of the items in our results and elect to either view or modify that item. We could print the list if we wanted a hard copy, or we can export the list out to a CSV file if, if we want to take it into Excel to perform some additional calculations. On the far right side of the inventory dashboard are charts to give us some important information at a glance. In this case, the charts illustrate cost of inventory by site, cost of inventory by items, and the number of items per manufacturer. Now let's get an idea of what exactly is an inventory item. To do this, let's view an existing item. Viewing an item allows us to see a read-only copy of the item so that we don't mistakenly make any unwanted changes. We will choose the View an Item command. At this point, we are prompted to select the item we want to view. We can filter our list using wildcards in the criteria if the item is hard to find in the list. As an example of this, let's say we are looking for an item manufactured by Bennington. We can enter BEN asterisk into the manufacturer field. The asterisk is a wildcard, which basically means that it will match anything after where it appears. By specifying BEN asterisk, we are saying to show us items from any manufacturer that starts with BEN. We will hit execute to run the filter. From here we'll choose our item and click OK. The item information box appears to show us all the important information about this item. On the general tab is all the general information about the item including the name, SKU, description, units, manufacturer and model, and UPC code among other things. The Vendors tab shows us which vendors supply this item to us. Vendors often assign their own SKU to an item, which may not match ours. This list also displays the cost of the item from each vendor. The Locations tab specifies a specific location at each site where the item is stacked. It also specifies the reorder level and target quantity for each site. On the Pricing tab, we see that we can specify an item selling price as well as four discount price levels. These levels can later be assigned to your customers to reflect their specific discount pricing. And finally, the image shows an image associated to the item if one was specified. We will click the Close button to exit the item screen. One common task with managing inventory is the ability to make an inventory adjustment. These happen for various reasons, but often it's the result of a physical inventory count or to reflect stolen or missing merchandise. To perform an inventory adjustment, we will choose the Adjust Inventory Levels command. When the box opens, we will choose the specific site that we want to adjust our levels for. At this point, if we want to choose a specific item, we can choose the Add Item option. 
However, in this example, we are going to be making several adjustments, and we want to see all the items. To do this, we click Add All Items. You'll notice the list is now populated with all of our active items. We can go to each specific item that we want to adjust and simply enter the corrected number into the Adjusted Quantity on Hand field. When all the adjustments have been made, click OK and confirm we want to make the adjustments. The other main function of the inventory dashboard is the ability to create transfer orders. Transfer orders are issued to track the flow of merchandise from one site in your organization to another. In our case, let's say we want to transfer some merchandise from store 1 to store 2. We will click the Create Transfer Order command and specify the sites. Now let's add items to the order. We can select multiple items by holding down the control key when selecting. Once we have the items on the order, we will specify the quantity we want to transfer as the order quantity. When done, we will post the order. When the order is posted, you will notice the Pick tab has appeared and the status has changed to Posted. In many organizations, the picking may be done by a separate person to prepare the order and they would be the ones to update the pick quantities when the order is ready to send out. In our example, we will just continue on with the picking ourselves. We will choose Auto Pick which will automatically update the pick quantities with the quantities actually ordered. And now we will choose Picking Completed. At this point, the inventory has left stock from Store 1. When Store 2 receives the transfer, they would fill in the received quantities to place the new inventory into stock. Again, in this example, we will go ahead and receive the merchandise into Store 2 by selecting Auto Receive and marking the transfer as completed. At any time after the order is created, the transfer box can be closed and resumed later. This is often the case for transfer orders, as there may be several people at various locations involved. However, we also demonstrate how easily a single person can follow the entire process to reflect the changes immediately. I hope you enjoyed this video covering some of the important features of the inventory dashboard, and please visit us at www.cloudskews.com for more information on our inventory control system.